Hello and welcome to another new video from BradleySederaGraph.com. In this video, we're going to provide an overview of the Bradley Sedera Graph as well as discuss how to apply it. The Bradley Sedera Graph was described by Donald Bradley in this book called Stock Market Prediction, which was released in the 1940s. The Bradley Sedera Graph is intended to identify dates when it's more likely that you might see a shift in market psychology. In the beginning of the book, Donald Bradley talks about how, in February of 1948, there was a significant rise in prices that suddenly stopped, and there was nothing that could be pointed to uh, from a macroeconomic perspective as far as why this would have happened. He even talks about an Associated Press article that stated, quote, The psychological factor is the joker in the economist's deck of cards. It is the big unknown which most frequently upsets predictions. The idea is that even though the stock market can be analyzed using fundamental analysis and technical analysis and other factors, the psychological factor also plays a big role. Uh, typically, investment decisions are made by humans you know, who have emotions, and psychology plays a significant role in those decisions. It, it's true that in the modern day, we have things such as high-frequency trading that involves more uh, decisions based upon algorithms that are programmed into computers, but still to a large extent, the decisions whether to buy or sell securities it is still somewhat judgmental and subject to investor psychology. So the Bradley side graph is intended to account for that additional factor, the shifts in market psychology that can take place from time to time. In the book, uh, Donald Bradley talks about the factors that underlie the Bradley side graph. And he talks about how, quote, there's an undeniable truth that business fluctuations seem too highly correlative with astrological factors to be the result of pure chance. And in the book, he shows some empirical examples of how certain astrological aspects are associated with either lows or highs in the stock market. And he uses uh, specifically aspects between Venus and Uranus when he does this. So he does provide a statistical basis for his Sidera graph. And I liked how he was very precise in the way that he calculates it. So let's talk about how it's calculated. Um, before we go on to the next... Uh, page, I'll just show that he did write some other books. Um, so if you're interested, you can look into these. But I would say that his book, Stock Market Prediction, is the most well-known book. This page right here on the Donald Bradley Sedera Graph formula, this provides some additional detail into how the formula is calculated. But for now, all you need to know is that there are three items that get added together to result in the Bradley Sedera Graph. There's something called the long terms, in the middle terms and declinations. So these three things added together, long terms, middle terms, and declinations. Those three added together equal the bradley sedera graph. So let's talk about the first two, the long terms and middle terms. So those are two of the three components, and they are basically based on planetary aspects, which can be positive or they can be negative. So here's the idea. If you look at uh, where the planets are located from Earth's perspective, some of them might be approximately 60 degrees apart from each other. And if they are, this is considered a sextile, which is a positive aspect. If they are 120 degrees, so for example, uh, Mars and Mercury, um, this is 120 degrees, that's 240. So you could look at it either way, but they're effectively 120 degrees apart from each other. That's considered a trine, which is a positive aspect. The more positive aspects that you have, the more that you'll see the bradley sedera graph increase, and you'll see a positive increase in investor sentiment. If you come over here to the negative aspects, you'll see that if two planets are 90 degrees apart from each other, that's considered a square, which is a negative aspect. Or if they're 180 degrees apart from each other, that's considered an opposition, which is also a negative aspect. The more that you see negative aspects, the more that the bradley sedera graph will go down and you'll have a decrease in investor sentiment. So here you have the positive aspects and negative aspects. And then down here we have uh, conjunctions which can be either positive or negative. So if from Earth's perspective, two planets are in a straight line, it's considered zero degrees and that's a conjunction. So this table down here simply shows when is it a positive and when is it a negative. So what you do is you basically add together all of these positive and negative factors 
And if overall the positive factors are overwhelmingly outweighing the negative, you'll have a higher bradley sedera graph value and you'll see the bradley sedera graph go up. The only difference between the middle terms and long terms that we talked about is that the middle terms are more for the closer in planets and they receive a little bit less of a weight. Whereas the long terms, th those are more for the outer planets such as Jupiter. You know, Jupiter, for example, is a much larger planet. It takes a lot longer to go around the sun. So the outer planets, they have a bigger weight. That's the only difference uh, between the middle, middle terms and the long terms. But those two of the three components simply relate to uh, planetary aspects as far as are they overall positive or are they overall negative? Now that we've talked about those two, so I'll just recap. The bradley sedera graph is based upon three things, the long terms, the middle terms, and the declinations. So far we've talked about the middle terms and long terms. Let's talk about the declinations. So this page provides a description. So if you've seen a uh, map of the solar system, frequently you'll see the Sun in the middle, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. So it shows it from this perspective. But even though um, it might look like the planets are all in a straight line, as the planets go around the sun, sometimes they can go up and sometimes they can go down. So Venus, instead of just being at the exact same level, it actually goes up a little bit and it goes down a little bit as it goes around the sun. And if it's higher up, it has a higher declination. And if it's lower, it has a lower declination. So this diagram here simply shows that as a planet goes around the sun, um, it can be higher or lower. So Venus and Earth, they're both you know, going around the sun, but Venus might be higher sometimes, and then it might be lower sometimes. So if it's higher, it has a higher declination, and if it's lower, it has a lower declination. Higher declinations are associated with it being, uh, with there being a higher and a, a better market psychology, and lower declinations are associated with a lower market psychology. So now that we've covered declinations, you've seen all three of the factors that are added together to equal the bradley sedera graph, which is the long terms and middle terms, which are based on planetary aspects, as well as declinations. And it's the declinations of the planets Venus and Mars, which are the two planets closest to the Earth. So now that we've talked about the formula as far as how it's calculated, Let's talk about how it's applied. So we'll go, go over here to the S&P 500 for 2015. Uh, you'll see here that for 2015, the bradley sedera graph goes up and down. So the idea is that we look at turns in the bradley sedera graph. So previously what people used to do was they would just judgmentally eyeball it and they would say, okay, this looks like a turn, that's a turn date. Some things are clearly a turn. Uh, some things are more judgmental. So for example, it looks like, you know, this is a strong turn in the bradley sedera graph. However, uh, what about this date? Is that a turn? What about that date? Is that a turn? Is that a turn? It's kind of hard to tell which one should be a turn versus which one uh, should not be a turn. So the Bradley bars are intended to calculate uh, when a turn date actually takes place as compared to having it be judgmental. Uh, so for example, this turn was relatively small, so it wasn't classified as a turn. Whereas, you know, this turn right here was classified to be big enough uh, to be a turn. So it's important to point out that when you see a turn in the sedera graph, that's not intended to be a, a turn in the market that re exactly reflects the, the turn. And he here's what I mean by that. If you see the bradley sedera graph go up and then down, that does not mean that the market will go up and then go down. That simply means that you might see the market make a turn. And what you see for this uh, turn date back here, uh, you'll see that the bradley sedera graph um, made a turn and then the market made a turn. And you'll see here that the bradley sedera graph made a turn and you'll see that the market made a turn. So the idea is simply to see when the bradley sedera graph turns and you look for a market turn. So it's perfectly normal if the bradley sedera graph makes a top and the market makes a bottom or vice versa. So that's how you interpret the bradley sedera graph. Uh, in addition to the sedera graph itself, uh, there's also uh, subcomponents that we talked about, such as the long terms, the middle terms, and the declinations. So if we go to 
the S&P 500 for 2014, we can see what the results look like. Uh, so let's just do some interpretation. So when you look at the bradley sedera graph, some of these dates are turns, but they're relatively small. So for example, these are technically you know turns, but they're so tiny that it's not really worth looking at. The turns that are worth looking at are probably the larger ones. Uh, keep in mind that historically people have said that a larger Bradley turn date is not typically associated with a bigger turn. Um, but obviously if a turn is so tiny, um, it wouldn't necessarily be worth looking at. So if you come down here and look at some of the bigger turns for 2014, you'll see that the first turn date of the year, January 1st, that resulted in the stock market. Uh, here we go. I think we have a description down here. The S&P 500's uh, significant rally from 2013, it paused. So if you look at what happened, this was the turn date. And you'll see that as the market approached the turn date, the market was clearly going up. However, right after the turn date, you see that the market pretty much flatlined and it went sideways. So a turn can be either the market going from up to down or it could be uh, going up to sideways, uh, things like that. It would be a, a change in the trend of the market. If you look at the other turn dates, uh, such as, I would say February 8th, it's probably a good day to look at. You'll see for February 8th, the uh, stock market was going down pretty significantly. And then right around February 8th, the stock market started to go up again. So that would be an example of how sometimes the Bradley Sidero graph makes a top and the market makes a bottom. And you can't assume that just because the Sidero graph makes a top that the stock market will make a top. Sometimes it can be the inverse. So simply look at it as when there's a turn in the Sidero graph, look for a turn in the in the market. Over here, you'll see that there's a turn for July 18th, and you'll see that this uh, was associated with a, a topping pattern in the S&P 500. The next one was on October 17th, and you'll see that there was a top in the Sidera graph and a bottom in the market. Over here on November 24th of 2014, there was a bottom in the Sidera graph, and you'll see there's a temporary top in the stock market. And then on the following turn date, on December the 9th, so if you come down here, you'll see. The market was in an increasing period uh, through November 24th until it flatlined from approximately that time until the next turn date on December the 9th. And after December the 9th, it started to go down. And you can see here that it didn't just go down a little bit, it went down pretty significantly after the December the 9th turn date. So at a high level, this is how I would uh, describe the way that you interpret the bradley sedera graph. Um, but I would also like to point out that the underlying elements for the bradley sedera graph, such as the long terms, middle terms, and declinations, they might also be worth looking at. So for example, for 2014, you'll see that the S&P 500 had a couple of significant uh, turn dates in the long terms. What you'll see here was there was a pretty significant turn in the long terms, and at almost the exact same time, there was a pretty significant low in the S&P 500. And then the next turn date that took place in the long terms, that was also taking place uh, at approximately the same time that the S&P 500 uh, started to make a significant uh, downturn. If you're interested in learning more about the Bradley bars, if you go to the downloads page, you can learn more about it. Uh, you can see how the dashboard works and uh, other information such as that. Um, on the website, you'll see different types of categories. Uh, you can see graphs of Bitcoins, uh, various commodities, uh, different international equity indices. Uh, there's a section on financial astrology, including some of the leading thinkers in the field of financial astrology. Um, the overview section provides an overview of some of the basics that might help you get a sense for um, how the bradley sedera graph works and some additional background information so i hope this was helpful for you and if you have any other questions feel free to reach out and i'll be happy to answer your questions thanks